Welcome to the short video on finding sources. You are in the process of your Renaissance research project and this you will be writing an annotated bibliography as well as including sources in your presentation. So this short video is going to talk to you about how to find those sources, what are scholarly sources, um, and walk you through using our WCJC online databases. So the first thing we need to talk about is scholarly versus non-scholarly sources. Scholarly sources are what we call academic sources. Usually, you know, they're going to always be, sorry, authored by an expert in the field. This is going to be somebody who has credentials in that field. Maybe they've got their PhD in that area. They're going to be articles in a scholarly journal or some other type of academic or scholarly source. You're going to look at um, scholarly articles that are evaluated by their peers, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I don't want to see Wikipedia. I don't want to see a dot .com. Um, you are going to rarely use a web page or website unless it happens to be um, an academic site, like maybe it's from an actual college. Um, who has someone who specializes in that topic area and they have information on their web page. Online databases through a collegiate source like WCJC are going to be some of your best sources. Um, another one that you can use while you can't use Google, there is Google Scholar. Um, and so that's something that you can use. Now, Google Scholar is one of those that instead of, you know, using regular Google, you can actually do a Google search for Google Scholar, and it will take you to a different search engine called Google Scholar. It will only kick up articles that are scholarly articles. Now, a lot of these are going to be what we call dissertations. They might be 137 pages because they're part of somebody's big paper, their dissertation that they had to write to get their PhD. Some of these are available, some of these you would have to pay for, but sometimes through Google Scholar you can find the title of an article that maybe you can go into the online databases through WCJC and sometimes you can find that same article, but Google Scholar will help you sometimes find the name of particular articles that might be helpful. All right, so scholarly sources, again, are those that are written by academic experts or scholars in the field um, of a particular discipline. Their peer review are evaluated by other experts in the same discipline for factual accuracy and a lack of uh, bias versus popular sources that we won't be using that include just about all other online and print publications from websites, magazines, to books written for non, from, uh, for non specialist. Um, so, you know, you want to be sure that you're focusing on scholarly sources. So when you're looking at a source, there are some things you can do to evaluate that source. You want to look for purpose, audience, evidence, and stance, the very same things that um, we look for in, in most of the reading that we do. Is the material in the source relevant to what you're trying to say in your, uh, with your topic and with your thesis statement? What are the author's credentials? Who is the publisher? If it's a website, who's the sponsor of that website? Um, even a .gov um, website can have a mission, okay? So maybe this is information, but maybe it's biased information. Maybe they're only giving you a part of it. For example, um, we're in a very big political climate. So if you were to go to any candidate's website, there's a mission, right? They're trying to convince you that they're the best candidate. So what you see there um, may not be the whole truth, all right? Um, they have a mission. If you go to a... Um, website, a government website about a certain disease or a certain illness. Um, sometimes there's a mission there because there are people advertising there. Um, there's a desire for you to donate money. So again, you know, we can get limited information. That's why we're looking for these scholarly sources. Um, so the sponsor of that website tells us sometimes a lot about what the mission is for that message. At what level is it written? Is this written at an academic, higher academic level, or is it just easy to read? 
Um, how current is it? You know, if you had a topic that was based on science or technology and you find something that's 10 years old, that's way out of date way outdated but if you're in English class and you're you're looking for sources to support um, what you're saying about a piece of literature the literature hasn't changed you can have an article that's 20 years old and it's still relevant to that piece of literature so again you have to think about your topic and think about um, how dated this material is that you're using is it cited in other works is it available can you get your hands on this information and does it include other useful information that you might be able to use? Now, we would be remiss if we did not discuss plagiarism. Whenever you fail to acknowledge a source by citing that author and the page or the publication date in your, in your text, in your information you're writing, um, including a work cited at the end of, say, your presentation um, or at the end of your essay, if you're not giving credit to that information that you didn't know before you started this search, if you're not giving credit to that author, um, then you're committing plagiarism. You have to avoid plagiarism by acknowledging sources and quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing carefully. Most plagiarism isn't intentional. People don't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to put my educational um, career in jeopardy and I'm going to plagiarize today. No, it, most people don't do it intentionally. So knowing the correct way to cite and incorporate sources is vital to your paper's success. Most people know that if they copy and paste something from a source or whether it's something someone wrote or someone said into a paper, they've got to put quotations around it and you've got to cite. But what a lot of people don't realize is that if you put it in your own words, they still aren't your ideas. If you paraphrase, even though you don't have to use quotation marks, you still better cite because you got that information from somewhere else. Summarizing would be like maybe you read an entire article and in a sentence or two, you can kind of give an overview of what that was about. OK, um, you still need to give credit to that source because those were not your ideas. All right. Moving on. No matter what college you go to, and you probably had this in high school as well, <clears throat> that institution will subscribe to online databases. They pay the subscriptions so that you as a student, as part of the student fees we love to hate, have access to materials that you need. So um, we'll be coming back and going through how to use our database extensively in a minute. But this is when you go to our web page, if you were to click on the library button, um, then you would see this library page. Now, our library page is is evolving, um, especially with COVID-19. It has evolved. All right. Because while you can't um, maybe physically go in the library, you can um ask questions online we have created a, a library answers and chat function so i have circled that there so you can see that um, the databases are down here okay um, it's now called open athens these are academic journals ebooks newspapers articles and streaming videos okay and it even tells you how you will log in if for some reason you haven't activated, for God's sake, your email from WCJC, you need to get that handled. If you're having trouble with that, you need to get that handled because you are missing emails from the college and me and your other professors. All right. So anyway, this is the hot link. This is to our databases. And again, I will come back and walk you through that um, during this video. But just so you know where this is. All right. So. One thing we need to talk about is searching effectively using keywords. Keywords, when we search using keywords, we're searching efficiently by using those keywords and different combinations of them that will focus your search on the information that you need. Now, let me start off by saying this is Google has spoiled us. We are used to the minute we see something, want to know more about it, we go to Google and we just type in something and Google, you know, just shows us the world. All right. This is not that easy. 
You have got to be patient. You have got to be flexible. You've got to try different combinations of keywords. And you've got to, I always have a piece of paper beside me. I jot down what it was I just searched, okay? Because maybe my first search yields like 5,000 hits, okay, of information. So I limit that. I try a different combination of keywords and it doesn't get me any results, okay? I, it's nice to know what I searched first so that I can tweak and, and move some of those words around a little differently. So if you'll just kind of keep a running list of, you know, what you use to search this time. Maybe I do a keyword combination and I get 20 articles, okay? That's awesome. Um, maybe I try something else and get zero. It's I want to know what I searched to get 20 versus what I searched to get 3,000. OK, um, so that just kind of keep a running running tab of, of what you're searching. Um, you can start off with one general keyword that will yield far too many results. Um, and so you're going to need to switch to more specific terms like we just talked about. If your keywords won't yield enough sources, then use broader terms or combinations or possibly. And this is a real important key, possibly substitute synonyms. You know how like when you're writing a paper and you feel like you're using the same word over and over and you'll right quick, right click and you'll see a different synonym you can use. Well, sometimes just using a synonym of the word you've been using to search can make a difference. For example, maybe you were searching home remedy, okay, instead of folk medicine, all right? So maybe, maybe folk medicine is getting no results, so you change that. What's another way I could refer to folk medicine? Well, a more popular term in current times is home remedy. So you try home remedy, and bam, there's what you're looking for. Um, searching requires flexibility in the words you use and in the methods you try. And I will tell you, one database um, might... You could use one word, uh, one keyword combination for one of our databases, go to the next database, and that yields you no results. Um, so amongst databases, they can be quirky, and, and one type of formula works better than another. All right, so exam, advanced keyword searching. Advanced search. This is um, some of these allow you to ask questions in conversational language. Others allow you to focus your search by using specific words or symbols. Um, some of you may find that you don't even like to use the advanced search, but let's talk about some types of advanced searches. This is about the formula. This is about the, the order of the words that you type in and those qualifying words that you give. If you put quotation marks around words to search for an exact phrase, like let's say we're looking up information on Thomas Jefferson, by putting quote, quotation marks around him, it will search that database for just those articles that have those words in them. Now, here's one I use a lot, the and, the or, or the not. All right, so let's talk about these. If you were to type and, to spe specify more than one keyword must appear in your sources. For example, you could put Jefferson and Adams. That would mean that I want to find articles that not only contain Jefferson, but they also contain Adams. Okay. Some search engines, instead of you putting the word and, they would prefer a plus sign. So you'd have plus Jefferson, meaning I want Jefferson, plus Adams, meaning I also want Adams. Now, I use and all the time, and you'll see that in some of the examples I'll show you in a minute. Or, you're going to use the word or instead of and if you're looking for sources that include any of several terms. So, Jefferson or Adams or Madison, okay? So, that means you're looking for three different, you know, people, three different terms, um, and you're looking for sources that might include any of those. You can use the word not to find sources without a certain word. So I know we've all had that experience. You've done a search and it's kicking up all these results. And maybe, for example, I want sources on Jefferson, 
but I see that I'm getting all these sources about Jefferson and Adams and I don't want Adams. That's not the area of the topic that I wanted to focus on. So you can say Jefferson, not Adams, because you've seen that you're starting to yield all these results that have Adams and you don't want those. That's not the, the, the way you want to take your research. Um, some search engines, instead of you putting not, would prefer a minus sign, okay, or which is actually a hyphen, okay? So you would have plus Jefferson. I want information on Jefferson, um, hyphen Adams. I don't want Adams, okay? Now, there's also another um, little tip or technique for an advanced search. You can type an asterisk in order to search for words in a different form. So, for example, if I wanted to, if I put an asterisk after the word teach, I'm going to get results. I'm going to get sources that contain um, teacher, teaching, any derivative of that word teach. So instead of just getting sources that are teach, I'm going to get words that include teach, teacher, teaching, um, any of those forms of that word teach. So quotation marks and or not um, an asterisk. Those are some, some tips and tricks that you can use. All right. So when you access our online databases via the library webpage, um, and I'm going to show you how to do all this, all right? Then when you get to the place where you're going to search, take your topic. You might add the word and, and then add the particular point or topic for your paragraph. Now, this was on a cause and effect paper, nothing to do with you and humanities, but you'll see um, the concept. So maybe I'm writing a paper about the causes of underage drinking. Maybe I also, one of my points in my paper is coping, okay? Maybe one of the reasons I'm saying that, that people drink when they're young is to cope with their life situation. So I could put causes of underage drinking and coping. Causes of texting while driving and connection. Okay, so maybe my paper's on the causes of texting while driving, and one of my points is that they they are so, um, they feel like they need to stay connected with people so bad that they'll do it while they're driving. So I've got my topic and then my point. Causes of poor performance in the workplace and work ethic. All right, so if my paper was on the causes of poor performance in the workplace, one of my reasons for the core or causes for the poor performance is a low work ethic there or how whatever their work ethic is. Effects of illegal immigration and jobs or effects of Ill illegal immigration and health. OK, so health or jobs would be points in that paper on that particular topic. So how does this apply to you? Okay, well, when you think about the Renaissance, right, um, whatever your topic is, maybe, maybe you search and say Renaissance and Leonardo da Vinci. Renaissance, uh, Leonardo da Vinci and Mona Lisa, okay, which was my topic. So remember, you can't have that one, all right? Um, so you just take whatever your topic is, whatever the topic is for your paper, and then you can add an and and add one of those points that you're going to make. OK, um, maybe I have Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and um, intelligence because that's one of my points. All right. You just play around with the word combinations until you yield the results you need. Always limit your search by selecting full text to the left of the search results. You do not want to look at an abstract. You need to have a full text article that can be in an HTML form, in other words, a web page type format, or a PDF. And I'll show you this when we go into the actual databases. You probably want to limit your years. If you're doing a current topic, you would want to limit your years, okay? But, and again, thinking about things like if it's a scientific or technological topic, um, 16 years is way too, you know, uh, this is four years ago. That may be too old. Okay. But for your topics, you're looking at the Renaissance. So really this doesn't apply to you because Lord knows, you know, the Renaissance has been around a long time. 
All right, so citing sources for a works cited entry in MLA. Once you've opened the article in the online database, like maybe you're using EBSCO, there's going to be a place where it will actually do the MLA citation for you. Then you can copy and paste that to the Word document, making sure um, that you keep the source formatting um, option. You have to have a hanging indention. All right, and let's talk about what a hanging indention is. <clears throat> Excuse me, a hanging indention. This is all of the source information, first of all. Here's the author. Here is the um, here is the title of the article. Here's the article that it was found in. Here are the the year, the pages, and then the database that was used to access it um, and the date of access. All right now. For a hanging indention, we're used to indenting paragraphs, which means the first line of a paragraph is indented, the rest of the lines are, are left aligned. Hanging indention is the opposite. The first line of this source entry is on that left margin. Then when after that first line, you indent over for each additional line of this. So that when I have this source and then I come in with my second source, I can tell where one source begins in the next one, uh, where one source ends and the next one begins based on the fact that there's this information that's out here hanging on the left, okay? So, um, all of this information you have to have on each of your sources, all right? Now, remember, you're going to have this information on a works cited slide at the end of your presentation. You're also going to have this information on... Um, some of this information cited within the slide itself. When you do research, you need to go beyond what your sources say. You need to use what they say to inspire and support what you want to say. Okay, This information is being used to prop up or help support what you said in your thesis statement. Um, you're not just regurgitating what they say, you're using what they say to support what you have said. All right, so let's try using these online databases. All right, so let's talk about how to use these databases. Um, we're on the home page for the college, wcjc.edu. Click library. You see this page that we referenced earlier. If I, here is the library answers chat that I noted earlier in this video. Um, here is the library databases. You will click on that. You will have to log in the first time. Once you have logged in, you will see our database menu. Now here, let me explain how this works. The librarian has taken all of the databases and has put them into categories, all right? Now, here's the general information database. One of the most commonly used is the Academic Search Complete, also called EBSCO, all right? Any of these, if you just have generalized kind of information that you're looking for, um, this is the location. Now, she has also taken and put these into categories, business and technology. If you're in humanities and literature, this is the section you want to look at. Now, let's talk about what might be different on this EBSCO versus this one. For this one, they have taken all of the kind of topics related to humanities and they have limited the search of Academic Search Complete or EBSCO. Okay, same. Um, so if I was in an English class and I had to write a paper on a piece of literature, when I go to search this EBSCO, it is a little different than if I were searching the, the, the one in the general information because this is going to limit the search topics to those that are applicable to literature or to humanities, okay? You've also got criminal justice and law enforcement, education, science, newspapers, and current topics. So if you've got some current type topic that you're researching, that would be a good location. Uh, fine arts and communication, social and behavioral sciences. If you have a psychology or sociology paper, you might want to come here because you've got all of the databases like that are targeting social and behavioral sciences. 
And then there are special databases, government, if you have a government paper. So there are all kinds of subject areas that have limited your search for you. So you can just kind of go to those areas. All right. Now, since we are searching the Renaissance, right, we would probably want to come into this area. Okay. Um, we're not doing a literature source, so, you know, that's not what we're looking for. So we would click on this academic search complete. It's going to look the same as if you would have clicked on the, um, the uh, more generalized one. All right, so here we are at the academic search complete or EBSCO database. All right, now you can click on advanced search and you can fill in a lot of extra things but i i don't do well with that but you may you may and you may master it i like to start here okay so i could say renaissance art and leonardo da vinci click search and I have 56 hits okay that's not bad now over here you want to limit your search to full text because if it is not a full text article we don't want any part of it okay now you may also click scholarly peer-reviewed journals now I'm down to 17 okay now, I can easily look through here and see if there's anything that might be relevant, okay? So let me just pick one, okay? Now notice this is in HTML full text, which is a lot like it's going to be in a web page format, the, the formatting of the text, uh, PDF full text, okay? Now, <clears throat> I can click on it. This gives me information. If I were to click, I can also just click on this and choose here whether I want the PDF or the HTML. I would choose the PDF if there is an option, okay? Because the PDF is going to give you actual scanned pages of the article. So you're going to see page numbers and things that would help you with your citations. Now, another thing I want to show you is if you clicked on that name of that article like we did, you also will see something called an abstract, okay? This is an overview of what is in this article. <clears throat> so, you can read about what's included in this article, and it's an easy, you know, you can read this one, it's a big paragraph, sure, but you could read this one paragraph, and you could decide whether this is potentially a good source or not, okay? If it sounds good, you can click the full text article. There it is, and notice it looks just like the page out of that journal. It's got page numbers and everything, okay? Now, some of these articles, are pretty long. So usually the way we do research in today's world is we do it a little bit at a time, right? So one afternoon you've got an hour before you go to work and so you sit down and you try to find some articles. You don't have time to read them. So if you could save those and then later when you have time go back and read those, that would be the ideal situation. So let's talk about folders, okay? First of all, you want to create an account. Now, if you used the WCJC online databases last year and you remember your, you set up an account, you remember your login, you probably still have the ability to access this based on last year's information. Okay. But you would click sign in and you would create account just like everything else that you create account for. Okay. Once you have created an account, so once you've created that account, you will have the ability to log in every time and access information that you saved. Now, you can create folders all day and not be logged in. You can save information to folders all day not being logged in. But when you go to um, re-access this information 
unless you're on the same computer, same situation, your information probably won't be there. So the point is create an account, set up a folder. Maybe you have a folder for Renaissance, or maybe you just have a folder for humanities and a folder for history. Um, however you want to set it up. All right, now let's talk about these little icons on the side. So this is where you could actually add this article to a folder and you can come back to it later. Okay, so you could dump it into a the folder and access it later. This, you could also email it to yourself, but that's not always successful. I would not print it at this point because this is a lengthy article and you may decide this is not what you want or need. So that would be a waste of time. Now, another jewel. This is amazing. Okay, you can click cite. Now, if you need to cite it in APA, here's the actual citation that you would copy and paste to a works cited page. We use MLA, okay? So it says, here's the works cited entry. So you could actually copy this, right? You could um, open a Word document and you could actually paste this citation. Now notice what happened when I just regularly pasted it gave me highlighting behind it. We don't want that, okay? But if you were to paste special you could choose rich text format and it only um, paste it paste it without the highlighted behind it. You also want to look for things like, depending on which version of Word or whether you're using pages, whatever, um, make sure that it kept like the italics, okay? That's italics for the 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 big name of the the, the article, the the journal art, the journal that it's in. Sorry, I can't even think today. Um, you've got in quotations, you've got the title of the article, here's the actual journal name, and then whatever database you used will also be in italics. Now, this is not in fully correct format. For example, and this is a little trick, we need that hanging indention, right? So you click at the end of the first line, press return, and tab. There you have it. Press at the end of the next line, return, tab and you have your hanging indention. Okay, now we didn't have to worry about creating this, okay, because EBSCOhost created it for us. Now some of these databases, and I believe EBSCO might be one of them, whatever you have saved in your folder, you could select all of those and it will do a citation for you for all of those. And then all you would need to do um, would be alphabetize those for a work cited. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at some other things that we can do. Let's try a different search, right? Let's say Leonardo da Vinci and Mona Lisa because that's my topic. Okay, well here's one right here. I can click on it. Remember I can look at, um, this one didn't have an abstract. There's my actual article and that's in HTML format. Notice how it looks a lot like a web page. I can pick it in PDF. Right, and then I've got actual page numbers um, and all of that, right? Now, you can try completely different com word combinations um, and get different results. So, yeah, I've got 26 here. Um, if I were to add Mona Lisa Mystery, which is something I discuss in mine, wow, I've got 1,951. And I've still got it limited to full text and scholarly. This one talks about the sfumato, which is a technique, right? Here I have an abstract that tells me about it. I can go to my full article. I can decide to put this in my folder for later. I can decide to cite it. Remember, you've got to scroll down to MLA. There's my citation. I can go back to my Word document, 
I can paste that in RTF. I can add my hanging indention. End of line, click your return, and then there. Now, all of these would need to be double spaced. So I'd have to go into my line spacing and create that double spacing situation. So I've even got this in alphabetical order. I keep a Word document or a Pages doc, whichever you prefer. I keep an ongoing for every article I think I might use. I dump it into this, this um, document. If I discover that I don't need it or I find I don't use it in my paper or in my presentation, then I go back into that document and I delete that. You only want on the works cited page those works that you've actually used. You've actually cited them within a paper or presentation. All right, so you can try other databases besides this one. You know, for example, maybe you. Um, want to try um, biography. Some of you are writing about particular people um, and making a point about that particular person. Okay, so I could say Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know if this will yield any results. All right, so here are nine biographies about him. Here's an image of the Mona Lisa. Remember, even if you use an image, you've got to um, All right, so here is um, an actual this was a little um, piece that was done on um, NPR radio, and this was on, you know, the Mona Lisa. So I could actually play the audio, right? Um, you can send this article to Google Drive. You can print it, email it, send it to your Microsoft OneDrive. You can download it. Um, so this is a different type of article. You can actually highlight on these. Notice it also has a site feature. So you could, there's your MLA 8th edition if you needed APA for something, Chicago. Um, so again, you could take that, copy and paste it into that document that you've been creating. Um, so there are different, you know, this is Gale in context. So there's, there are different, you know, types of sources or, or databases be beyond just um, the one that, you know, EBSCO. All right, so hopefully um, you have seen some different ways that you can actually, um, you know, cite information. And so now it's about going out there and finding your sources. All right. Um, a lot of this is just trial by error. It's just trying something and seeing if it yields the results you need. Um, remember, you're going to be finding, you know, five sources for that annotated bibliography. They need to have, they need to be relevant to what you're going to say um, in your thesis statement. So, again, you've got to come up with that thesis statement. You've got to come up with that proposal. Um, you've got to submit that. Get some feedback from me. And then you've got to start looking for sources that you can use to support those ideas that you have. And even though you're not writing that full-blown paper, you are still supporting what you said with information from sources. I hope this will make your research process a little bit easier. You can honestly use all online databases and find what you need. If you have any questions, email me, okay? Maybe I can give you some ideas. Don't give up if you search something three times and can't find anything. You just have to keep tweaking the, the keyword searches and keep um, changing up the order of what you're looking for. 
trying some different databases, knowing that each of those databases has its own little personality. So what worked with one database may not work with another, but keep in mind that formula. What is my subject and what am I wanting to um, explore in reference to that subject and make that part of that search formula, those keywords. Thank you for joining me for this short lecture.